I like your hat. Ah, uh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I make it myself. I'll send you one if, if you dig it. Oh, definitely, man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You'll have to email me a good address for that. All right, sweet. All right, I am here with Dr. Michael Greger of NutritionFacts.org. Welcome back to the podcast. Happy to be back. And it's good to see you back on the treadmill. It takes me back to the first time we did this back in 2013. It's it's crazy. And it's all wow. almost 2020s here. So um, good to have you back on. Uh, by the way, congrats on your book, How Not to Diet. Um, amazing. You guys sent me the uh, the advanced reading version of it. I loved it. Um, I want to know why did you write this book and um, what sets it apart from your previous book, How Not to Diet? Yeah, I'm super excited. It uh, uh, premiered first week, number two on New York Times bestseller list. I'm super psyched. Um, uh, you know, for me, it was, you know, with just so much uh, nutritional noise and nonsense these days, I just wanted there to finally be an evidence-based diet book. And, you know, I cite literally thousands of studies digging up every possible, you know, tip, trick, tweak technique proven to accelerate the loss of body fat to give people every possible advantage and basically build the optimal weight loss solution from the ground up. Um, so, but that was really my primary goal. So the first book, How Not to Die, um, you know, the first half was just, you know, fit the 15 leading cause of death, a chapter on each, talking about the role diet may play in preventing, arresting, or reversing each of our top 15 killers. Um, but... Um, but for the weight loss book is like, look, I'm just all my, my goal is like, what will be efficacious for weight loss? Now, I mean, I don't have a chapter on, you know, like the best cigarettes to smoke, um, which, you know, uh, so we know that causes weight loss, but, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's not go too far out on a limb here, but definitely that was my, it was like, basically regardless of what else, you know, uh, you know, whatever food supplement or behavior does, if it, if it's proven to accelerate the loss of body fat, it's going in the book, unless it was just a little too crazy. So there was, uh, you know, like, so for example, I asked, there was a licorice root one. It's a whole chapter on licorice root. I felt it was too dangerous because it can actually uh, cause some problems in the kidneys and stuff. And like, it was just like, ah, uh, someone's going to, someone's going to go too far and get hurt. I was like, all right, I took that out. Um, but pretty much otherwise, it was just like number one criteria does it cause you to lose weight? It goes in the book. Yeah, I loved it. And it was a thick book, just like your first one. It was a very thick read. Um, but anyone who was into your first book, I think would love How Not to Diet. So I'll have a link in the show notes if you guys want to check that out. Highly recommend it. But um, kind of going off of some of the information you talked about in your book, I want to keep this conversation so basic or at least the questions will be very basic. The answer might be a little bit more complicated. And I always learn something new when I talk to you. Um, I just want to go through why meat, fish, dairy, and eggs are not healthy. I just want to ask those simple questions. And if you can just kind of break it down for people who might be just getting into this because it's the new year, maybe they have a new year's resolution, or maybe it's people that have been on this for a while and just never thought about, you know, I don't know. I don't know why meat isn't healthy. I'm just doing it because I love animals, for example. So let, let's start off with with meat. Um, Dr. Gregor, what would you say about meat and why it's not healthy? Well, so I mean, the, at the most basic level, um, it is lacking some of the uh, nutrients of concern. So for example, 97% of Americans don't even reach the recommended minimum daily intake of fiber. 98% of Americans eat potassium deficient diets, not even me meeting the minimum recommendation for potassium. Um, so there's some things that we're really desperately in need of um, that are um, missing from meat and other things. And then there are things we're getting too much of like saturated fat, trans fat, sodium. Um, and, that, and, and so it, it's the bad stuff in meat and the lack of good stuff uh, which are predominantly in plant foods that together make it a less healthy choice than other sources of protein, for example, legumes, beans, split peas, chickpeas, and lentils. So if you compare like, you know, uh, you know, chicken to chickpeas, for example, I mean, it's just like, it's not even a, I mean, it's, I mean, it's you know, you start feeling bad for the chicken because it just gets its ass whooped by the chickpeas, right? Um, just because like, you know, one has fiber, one has zero fiber, right? Well, I mean, one has 
you know, uh, you know, potassium and phytonutrients and, you know, antioxidants. And I mean, you know, and the other one is just like, oh, it's got saturated fat and cholesterol. And, um, uh, you know, it's just, uh, you know, look, um, I, you know, uh, you can make an argument. It's better than, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, eating a tub of frosting. Right. But, you know, y you know, it's all, you know, it's, but it's like, is it healthy compared to what you could eat in replacement of it? And the answer is quite simply no. Right. And it sounds like, I mean, most people will eat meat because they want protein. And you mentioned chickpeas, there's lentils, legumes, nuts and seeds, all, all essentially all plant foods have protein. So um, I think that's a great point is when you're eating meat, there's a lot of healthier things that you can replace it. But when you compare it to like whipped cream, of course, it's going to be healthier. Um, fish is another protein source that's commonly recommended and it's also recommended because of its high levels of omega-3s so uh, what would you have to say about fish and other sea animals so again when you ever ask is something healthy yeah the follow-up has to be well compared to what right so are eggs healthy well compared to the you know breakfast link sausage next to it yes compared to oatmeal not even close right same thing with fish well what would you be eating instead of fish, right? Is fish better than bacon? Absolutely. Less sodium. It's not a category one carcinogen known to cause cancer in human beings like all processed meat, bacon, ham, hot dogs, lunch meat, and sausages. Um, and so, yeah, would that be a better choice? Absolutely, right? So, I don't know, like a fish sandwich versus a BLT or something? Okay. But, I mean, that's like only if you live in a world where there's no healthier options, right? You know, what if you could, oh, have some lentil soup, boom, oh my God, just, you know. Um, uh, unfortunately, the aquatic food chain is getting less and less healthy the more polluted the world becomes. So now if you had a time machine that could go back before the Industrial Revolution, that's one thing. But basically the highest levels of all the industrial pollutants we're concerned about, PCBs, dioxins, toxic heavy metals like lead, mercury, um, are at highest levels, um, uh, predominantly in the aquatic food chain. So basically everything eventually flows into the sea. So like all the mercury spewed from all the coal plants in China eventually settles into the oceans and builds up the aquatic food chain. Um, and so, uh, you know, uh, yes, you can eat smaller fish, shorter lived fish that don't, you know, build up so many toxins. You know, we could eat minnows or something, but, um, unfortunately we've, uh, kind of so polluted our planet that if we want to um, try to eat a clean diet, then fish would be the last place to go. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you mentioned some of the things that fish already naturally and biologically has, but chemically, wouldn't you say that fish is probably the most toxic food that you can eat? I mean, you mentioned mercury and all the runoffs that go into the ocean, right? Like, isn't that... Well, in terms of the industrial pollutants, definitely. I mean, there's no higher levels. Um, found, yeah, I mean, so fish and in particular farmed fish. Um, so wild caught fish has lower levels, um, which would seem to be the opposite, but no, farm fish is the highest levels. Um, and so, you know, look, there's better, worse choices, but, um, uh, you know, there's better choices than all of them. And that's to get that same protein from, you know, healthier sources. Um, uh, and that way, and the healthiest sources are whole plant foods. How about uh, omega-3 sources or any supplements that would be superior to eating fish or fish oils for omega-3 purposes? So omega-3 fatty acids are essential fats, meaning we have to get them in our diet. We don't make them. Um, we don't need much. Um, and so that's part of my recommendation. Everyone eat a tablespoon of ground flax seeds every day. Just get about 2.2 grams of ALA, alpha linolenic acid, the short chain omega-3 fatty acid that our body can then elongate into the long chain omega-3s we need for optimal brain health. DHA and EPA. Now the question is, you know, different people have different abilities to elongate the short chain omega-3s found in flax seeds and chia seeds and hemp seeds and uh, walnuts. Um, and so are we getting enough of those long chain omega-3s in our brain for optimal health? Um, and it's an unanswered research question, but I think there's uh, um, enough good evidence, including randomized controlled trials, where you split people up in two groups and give um, half of them algae-based um, DHA, which is a, so a pollutant-free source of DHA. You don't want to give fish oil because then you're worried about all the pollutants. 
So, uh, and you can actually get a significant improvement um, in, uh, in cognitive function. Um, and so that's what we're particularly worried about, particularly older men um, uh, uh, may not uh, convert as well. And so I recommend everyone consider taking 250 milligrams of DHA, algae-based, or pollutant-free DHA, yeast, or algae-based DHA um, uh, every day. Um, uh, and so that's part of my optimum nutrition recommendations you can find on nutritionfacts.org. Gotcha. Perfect. Um, now, talking about dairy, um, you know, milk, cheese, uh, yogurt, any milk products, lot, lots of those are recommended typically for calcium. I mean, of, of course, they have protein. They'll mention that as well. But calcium is the main reason why that is recommended. Um, what, uh, what would you have to say about dairy and why that's not the healthiest thing? Yeah, I mean, so that's basically a marketing ploy. So if you look at... Um, meta-analyses of hip fracture rates, for example. And that's what we care about. We care about does, you know, consuming lots of calcium decrease your risk for hip fractures? And it turns out, no. And whether you're eating dairy uh, as a teen, uh, uh, as an adult, it does not put all the studies together and it's just a wash. It does not appear to um, impact bone health what we care about, which is fracture rates. And so, now, I mean, you need to get enough calcium, calcium, um, is an essential uh, nutrient, um, but, uh, you know, so we should get, uh, you know, 600 milligrams of calcium a day, but we can get that from healthier sources. You know, I mean, it's an important concept that food is a package deal, right? So, yes, there's protein in pork and iron in beef and, you know, uh, calcium in dairy, but there's also stuff that we don't want. So as much as Burger King says, have it your way, you can't be like, yeah, can I get a burger? But, you know, hold the saturated fat, hold the trans fats, hold the hormones, hold it. No, it all comes together, right? And so by choosing to get your calcium from dairy sources, you get this baggage. You get the saturated butter fat and the cholesterol and the hormones, stuff you may not want. Whereas you get that same calcium, which is actually even more absorbable from low oxalate, dark green leafy vegetables. So you get that same calcium from kale, for example, um, and then instead of baggage, you get a bonus. You get the, you know, the, the, the you know, the iron, potassium, the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, 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 you know, fiber and phytonutrients and antioxidants, all this good stuff that you're missing out on when you get uh, um, your calcium from dairy sources. So you get kind of the best of both worlds when you choose plant sources um, of uh, these critical nutrients. Yeah. And I think you nailed it there where you said food is a package deal. Um, I know lots of these questions are very reductionist and kind of, you know, looking at it from either a protein or an omega-3 or a calcium aspect. Um, but these are, you know, common questions, unfortunately, that the public has in mind and don't really understand that food is, in fact, a package deal. Like you said, um, I do have one more reductionist question about eggs um, and Eggs have protein, they'll be recommended for protein, but they also have choline. And eggs are often what? Um, choline. Oh, choline, yeah. And they're often recommended almost exclusively just for that nutrient. Now, can you talk a little bit about choline? Because I found this, I find this topic so fascinating. Okay, so um, just to, to get back to the foods package deals, I mean, that, the food industry loves talking about foods in terms of nutrients. And the reason is because then they can sell you crap like Fruit Loops with now with vitamin D. You're like, wow, good source of vitamin D. I better get Fruit Loops because I need this vitamin. I mean, in fact, the whole breakfast cereal industry now with 13 vitamins and minerals. I mean, it's all about, you know, all you need is the nutrients. And so might as well get it in a fluorescent colored sugar packet. I mean, it's just right. As but Well, no, that's not how it works, right? Um, uh, right. So, right. Food is a package deal. And so that's what the food industry doesn't want you to think of, right? The whole package, because if you do all, all of a sudden, you're just, all you can shop is in the produce aisle, basically, and over to the, you know, canned bean aisle, you know? Uh, anyway, but, uh, yeah, so eggs, um, you know, uh, so the, yeah, the egg industry likes to talk about choline. Choline is a critical nutrient. Um, uh, but the concern is you're getting too much of it because, um, bad bugs in your gut can take choline and turn it into trimethylamine, which gets oxidized by liver, turns into something called TMAO, trimethylamine antioxide, which then circulates throughout your body and damages your arteries, increases your risk for a long list of diseases. Basically, it's the same thing that uh, your bacteria can do with carnitine, uh, what's found in red meat. 
Um, and so that's so you give people eggs and you get a boost in TMAO levels um, in their bloodstream, uh, which is associated with all sorts of bad things, including all cause mortality, living a significantly shorter life. Whereas you give people another high choline source like broccoli or something, and you don't get that reaction. It's because actually the broccoli, at the same time you're getting the choline, downregulates the enzyme in your liver, which converts TMA to TMAO. Um, and so you get the best of both worlds, again, when you choose plant foods for your nutrition. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and eggs are, I believe, the, the most uh, concentrated source of cholesterol, dietary cholesterol. Is that correct? With the exception of brains. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, hopefully not too many people eat brains, <laughs> but um, you never know. Uh, with eggs, uh, I've been, or I've heard rather, that eating eating eggs, they won't actually raise your serum cholesterol, the cholesterol inside your body, in your blood. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and maybe why that is or why that's not the case? Yeah, so yeah, um, the way, so uh, dietary cholesterol, for which eggs are one of the most concentrated dietary sources, does indeed increase your serum cholesterol, um, so much so that the National Academy of Sciences, the most prestigious medical body in the United States, says we should minimize their intake of cholesterol as low as possible, as low as possible. Um, in fact, and they go on to say, of course, that would mean people have to eat a vegan diet, because cholesterol is only found in animal foods. And so, look, we can't go that far. So basically, as low as possible without going vegan, you know, without, you know, uh, be, you know, anyway. But um, uh, the, uh, um, um, so, um, uh, but the way that the egg industry designs studies to show that it doesn't is there's a plateau um, such that if you are eating a really, um, uh, 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 a diet already packed with animal foods, meat, dairy, and eggs. Um, you basically, you, 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 there's a there's a, a limit to how much cholesterol you can absorb. Um, and so, if you're already way up on the graph, adding another egg is not gonna not gonna hurt you. But you're already gonna die from heart disease, so it's like doesn't matter. Whereas you take someone who doesn't eat eggs, give them an egg, they're at the sharp end of the curve. It shoots on up. Um, but you can design a study to show the look. They ate eggs and nothing happened. Yeah, they're already uh, half off. You know, they already have one foot in the grave, and so eating another egg is not going to push them any further. But uh, that's not exactly where we want to be in our lives. Yeah, and that's a little bit misleading too, because if somebody's cholesterol is already high, but it doesn't go any higher because they eat a bunch of eggs, doesn't necessarily mean that's a good thing, because their cholesterol might be already high. Um, Right. I mean, that's I maybe. Mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, right. And even if their cholesterol is normal, having a normal cholesterol in a society where it's normal to drop dead of heart disease, the number one killer of men and women. Well, obviously, you don't want normal cholesterol. You want ideal cholesterol. Right. I mean, it's like having a normal, um, normal amount of body fat. That means you're overweight. Seventy percent of Americans are overweight. You don't want to be normal. Right. You want to be healthy. Right. Having a normal blood pressure. Right, is having a deadly blood blood pressure. Right, if it's a leading cause of death, we don't want normal. Um, uh, you don't want normal in a sick society. Do you think maybe just human beings? They're not designed to eat animal products, and they're not quote omnivores as people claim that we are. I mean, it's a it's an empirical question, um, and indeed, we um, you know millions of years before we learned how to sharpen spears and you know, mill grains and boil sugar cane, our bodies evolved in the context of what the rest of our great ape cousins were eating, plants, right? I mean, the Paleolithic period where we started using tools and so we could actually start hunting, I mean, it only goes back about two million years, right? We and other great apes um, have been, uh, you know, evolving since back in the Miocene era, about 20 million years ago. And so throughout, you know, first 90% of our hominid evolution, our diets, um, you know, we ate with the rest of our great ape cousins eat, which is plants. Um, so maybe we should, uh, you know, uh, go back to the diets our bodies were designed to eat um, and, uh, you know, go back to our roots, no pun intended. <laughs> that's, that's great. Well said there. So, yeah, I'll give you the spotlight now. Now, now tell us, you know, what we should be doing. These are all the things how not to diet, right? Tell us how to diet. Tell us the foods in and the lifestyle factors that you recommend. 
Yeah, well, um, look, I mean, the good news is we have tremendous power over our health, destiny, and longevity. The vast majority of premature death and disability is preventable with a plant-based diet and other healthy lifestyle behaviors. What do I mean by a plant-based diet? Well, that's a diet that minimizes the intake of meat, eggs, dairy, and processed junk and maximize the intake of fruits, vegetables, legumes, your beans, split peas, chickpeas, and lentils, whole grains, nuts and seeds, mushrooms, herbs, and spices, basically real food that grows out of the ground. These are our healthiest choices. Absolutely. And are there any supplements? Like I know you mentioned, you mentioned DHA, right? A plant-based algae form, vegan uh, DHA supplement. Are there any other type of supplements that you recommend uh, for people on a whole food plant-based diet to consume? The most critically important nutrient, and that's vitamin B12. There's two vitamins not made by plants. One is made by animals such as yourself. When you walk outside, it's vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin. Not if you're wearing a really stylish hat like that, you won't be making vitamin D, but if you, uh, if you go out there and bear some skin, you can get some uh, vitamin D production. The only other vitamin not made by plants is vitamin B12, not made by animals either, made by little microbes that blanket the earth. So yeah, you can get uh, you know B12 drinking out of a mountain stream or well water or something, but now we chlorinate our water supply to kill off any bacteria. You don't make a lot of B12 in our in our water anymore. Don't get a lot of cholera either. That's a good thing. We live in a nice sanitary world. But because we do, we need to get a regular, reliable source of B12. Our fellow great apes get all the B12 they need, eating bugs, dirt, and feces. I prefer supplements. Uh, 2,000 micro. My uh, recommendations have recently changed. 2,000 micrograms of uh, cyanocobalm in the cheapest form once a week is all you need, or 50 micrograms once a day. Get all the B12 you need, but critically, important to do for anyone eating a plant-based diet. Even if they eat meat a few times a week, um, uh, it's uh, important they get enough B12. Yeah, I think even over, uh, I think people over the age of 50 or 55, I forget what the 50. exact, is it 50? Um, I think that's a, a, a recommendation for anyone everybody, over. Right, everybody, according to the National Academy of Sciences, everyone at age 50 should take a vitamin B12 supplement. Those eating plant-based just need to start earlier. Yeah, definitely. And now, how about uh, vitamin D? Is there a particular type of vitamin D you want people to take, D2 or D3? So, I mean, you can get it through sunshine, but if you're in stuck inside all day watching YouTube, then uh, you uh, may need to get vitamin D, in which case, uh, 2,000 international units uh, every day of vitamin D3 is probably best. Yeah, the only reason I ask, and this is just in general, not just from vegans, so many people tend to be deficient in vitamin D because like you said, we're indoors, we're wearing clothes. And so I think, I think that's something to just have as an option, but absolutely. I think we should be getting more sun um, and uh, probably taking more vacations to Miami or something. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, let's see here. Uh, my last question, and I know you're so versed in the, in the research, um, but I can't help of watching a few like, like debates, like, you know, the game changers debate, like, I don't know if you, you probably caught the Joe Rogan, um, yeah, the game changers yeah, debate, yeah. right? Cool. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I think James Wilkes came into this very prepared, very, uh, very knowledgeable guy, but there's a lot of back and forth and there's studies on one hand showing that whole food plant-based diets healthy, like you, you've spoken about, but then, you know, Chris Kresser and other advocates of non-vegan diets will cite you know, legitimate studies coming from peer reviewed journals. And I'm just wondering why is there that discrepancy if they're both peer reviewed and, and they're both, you know, they're both scientific studies. Can you talk a little bit about that and, and why both sides have this research and just causing a bunch of confusion in the middle? Yeah. I mean, so that's why you have to take the best available balance of evidence. So for example, in fact, I have some two, two videos coming up, uh, couple weeks on nutritionfacts.org. One's called the best foods and the one's called the best beverages. And what they did is they did a meta-analysis of meta-analyses. Basically, they took all the, um, the systematic reviews that had ever been done on any particular food. And so like uh, meta-analysis on fruit for high blood pressure or fruit for, uh, for uh, you know, cholesterol or fruit for, and then put them all together um, and, and then displayed it in one little teeny uh, graph basically said, so these are the, how many reviews or reviews show that fruit is beneficial, show that fruit is neutral, or fruit is, or fruit is deleterious, right? And so, and they do that for fruit, 
for, for every major class of foods, fruits, vegetables, meat, dairy, eggs, chicken, you know, soda, like on down the list, right? And so, so, and so, and you, you'll see, for example, there are, I think it was 7% of studies on, of meta-analyses on soda show it's protective, show it's beneficial. You say, what are you talking about? Well, of course, they're funded by Coca-Cola. Ah. So you, there's a study funded by Coca-Cola saying that, you know, whatever. Okay. And so, so the, so uh, Mr. Coke could come out and say, look, here's a study. In fact, 7% of studies, I don't know how many of that, I forget how many, what the total was. Here's study after study showing Coke is good for you. Drink more Mountain Dew, peer-reviewed scientific literature. And so if you didn't know, if you didn't take a step back and look at the survey of literature, the whole literature, and say, well, no, no, 93% of studies and every single one of independently funded studies show that soda is not good or at the most neutral, um, well, then, okay, so is soda good or bad? You got to look at the best available balance of evidence. Can't be cherry picking. You got to look at the whole evidence. So when you do that, guess what? Are vegetables good for you? Damn right they are. Our fruit, of course, fruit's good for you. But, you know, so 7% of studies show that soda was good. Not a single study could show that eggs were good. Um, in a meta-analysis, not a single, so big fat goose egg for eggs. Same thing with poultry. Not a, Even the soda industry can make soda look good, but the poor chicken industry can't even come up with a single meta-analysis showing chicken's good. Anyway, so it's, it's a, I, I love that. Um, I love that series of two videos. Um, and it just gives you a good kind of bird's eye view and be like, look, this is what the totality of evidence shows. Um, and so, yes, if you're slimy, you can pick out um, the minority studies and say, look, this is what the science shows and confuse people to their detriment and potentially to their death. Or you can be like, this is what the consensus shows. This is what the best available balance of evidence shows. Um, how else can we make decisions, um, uh, life and death decisions that affect ourselves and our families? When did you say that was published? This review was recently published? The, the, the review's been up for a while. I just, I, my video's on it. Uh, oh, your videos. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can search for it. You can, you can do a sneak preview. When are your videos coming out? Um, uh, they're at the end of this next DVD. I, I'm, I'm, weeks. They'll be out in weeks. Okay. They're, they're coming up in the next, so that's the next 26 block of videos. I look forward to that. Um, the reason I wanted you to, to say that, um, so many of these studies on the other side of people claiming that eggs, for example, are healthy, most of them are industry-funded studies, you know, backed by the egg industry. So um, I'm glad you mentioned that. And, you know, it's so funny listening to that debate with Joe Rogan and Chris Kresser. Um, I'm talking about, like, the first version, which I don't know if Joe has taken down yet or not. But it's funny. They they brought up nutritionfacts.org, and they claimed that it was biased. And you cherry... You're literally reading the studies out loud. There's n no other way that you can be less biased, um, which I think is just insane. So I really love your website, nutritionfacts.org. Um, tell us a little bit about that before you go, and how can people support the work that you put out for free, completely for free. Uh, yeah, so nutritionfacts.org is a free, nonprofit, science-based public service providing daily updates on the latest in nutritional research being bite-sized videos, more than 2,000 videos now, every aspect of healthy eating, new videos and articles nearly every day, and the latest in evidence-based nutrition. What a concept. It's also 501c3 nonprofit. If, um, if you want to donate and uh, support us, you make a tax-deductible donation. Uh, but I think that the giving season this year has been very good to us. And I think we're going to be able to plow forward um, with now uh, we have uh, uh, like 14 staff now to churn through the tens of thousands of articles. So you don't have to. Yeah, love it. Love it. And I've been chatting with some of your staff with emails in the past. So, like everybody, such a great team over right, there. Right. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, any uh, plans with 2020? Anything you're looking forward to or you have kind of plan that you're willing to share? Uh, 200 City Book Tour. Oh, nice. Um, uh, over the next 10 months. Uh, so hopefully I will be in every one of your listeners' backyard. I look forward to seeing everybody. And then uh, back to the next book starting uh, January 2021, How Not to Age, will be out December 22. 
Love it. Oh man, you are on top of it. Yeah, I hope to catch you in one of these cities. Maybe we'll uh, we'll chat again and do another episode. I look forward to that. All right. Well, Dr. Gregor, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. And I'll have all the links to your website, your book in the show notes down below where everyone can check out. And yeah, uh, happy new year and, uh, and, and good luck with everything. Keep up the good work yourself. All right. Thanks. Sweet. Sweet. I look forward to my hat. <laughs>